station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? JSC PAO, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Courtney Beasley with JSC PAO. How do you hear me? Crew 6, it's great to see all of you today. Thanks for taking the time to answer some questions about your mission ahead of your departure from the station. We'll be taking some questions from our phone bridge and through our social media using the hashtag AskNASA. As a reminder, for those on the phone bridge, press star 1 when you're ready to ask your question and star 2 if your question has already been answered. And on social media, be sure to use the hashtag AskNASA if you'd like to submit a question. And if your question is for a specific astronaut, please direct that question to them by name. Before we start taking questions today, we'll kick it off with some opening remarks from Crew 6. Take it away. Um, we got a lot done during our mission. We had uh, two visiting SpaceX cargo vehicles, the CRS-27 and 28 missions, with lots of science on board. We, uh, as a crew, conducted a total of three spacewalks. Um, we had the Axiom uh, crew come visit us in May. We've done a lot of maintenance up here, um, especially this summer. It's been a vis busy uh, maintenance period. Captured the Cygnus uh, 19 vehicle. And so it's just, those are just a few highlights, but it's been a, a real adventure and a lot of fun. I did also want to recognize my classmate and colleague, Frank Rubio. Um, we've been up here for six months. Frank thought when he flew to space he would be here for six months, and partway through his mission, he found out that it was extended to a year. Um, his leadership up here as the USOS lead has been incredible. He's been amazing to work with, and uh, Frank is just, uh, making a huge sacrifice being away from his family for so long and I uh, just want to really recognize the service he's uh, given to us aboard the space station. Um, all right, it's my honor to turn it over to Sultan and I also wanted to just recognize Sultan as the uh, first long duration UAE astronaut. Um, it's been amazing working with him up here and uh, getting to see him do the first uh, spacewalk of any astronaut from his region was uh, one of the true highlights of our mission. Thanks so much, Woody. And uh, uh, ground, uh, we have a, um, an echo here, if you can turn off uh, the mic whenever we're talking. Uh, I totally agree with you guys, Steve, Woody. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure working with you guys. It's, it's been a, an amazing journey. It's hard to believe that we're already there, right? It's, uh, it's been a, a, a trip of a lifetime. I think it's, uh, it's amazing. Every part of it was amazing arriving here and uh, saying goodbye to a crew that we uh, had a handover, short handover with them. And we're just going to do the same with Crew 7. It's, it's hard to believe, honestly. But everything, every part of it was amazing. Uh, our spacewalks, our experiments, our daily routine, uh, the interaction with the, the students from all over the world, it was really amazing. And just spreading the enthusiasm is really amazing. And um, hopefully it won't be the end. Hopefully we'll uh, get to fly together as a crew and uh, we always get to uh, 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 be asked uh, whether we want to fly with the same crew and I always say 100% so I would definitely choose you guys to fly uh, in the future again. Over to you. Thank you all. Uh, it was a nice experience for me for it was a it great crew uh, my crew members, uh, thank you, thank you for each evening, each uh, day, uh, what I spent here, and um, I think we we did many uh, many useful uh, things for people's future, 
uh, what uh, will move uh, mankind to forward. Yeah, thank you. Of a technical difficulty at first, would you please repeat your opening remarks for us? Okay, do you have our voice now? We have you loud and clear. Just, it's just for you, Steve, okay, to do repeat. Okay, you want us all to repeat our opening remarks? Oh, just for me. Oh. <laughs> they all said such wonderful things. I, you know, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Uh, I, you know, I started off just basically saying what an incredible crew this has been uh, to serve with, and uh, what a great group. And I really am. Uh, uh, it's been a, it's been a privilege and an honor to spend time on board the International Space Station with them. Since the first day we started training together, it's been just fantastic. Uh, just can't imagine having a better crew. And uh, Woody recognizing Frank, that was fantastic as well. Frank has been an outstanding leader as the USOS lead and uh, really set the example for us to follow uh, throughout our six months on board. And uh, as Sultan said, you know, we are coming to the end of this part of the mission. And uh, I know we'll continue on together. If we do ever get a chance to fly again, that would be incredible because this is, uh, as he said, a crew I, I would definitely want to fly again with. All right, thank you all for kicking it off for us and sorry for that technical difficulty. We'll start taking questions now from our phone bridge. The first question comes from Elizabeth Howell with space.com. Go ahead. Hello, thanks for finding the time. This one is for Woody. Can you give us a little bit more insight into how you filmed all those great behind the scenes videos showing daily life on the International Space Station? Thank you. Oh, sure. Um, well, that's been a lot of fun, and actually I have to credit Sultan, who's uh, helped out many times, uh, actually inspiring me uh, to do little short clips like that and also uh, helping me out as a cameraman. Um, really, I just wanted to kind of do something that I hope was authentic and in the moment without too much preparation, just showing some of the uh, amazing work that we get to do up here. So anytime that I had a few extra minutes and thought I was doing something a little bit interesting, I figured I'd pull out a camera and, and hopefully share it with people so they could see. Okay, and our next question comes from Marsha Dunn with the Associated Press. Uh, yes, hi, Marsha Dunn, AP. I would like each of the four of you to answer, please. Um, six months in space, you're going to be coming back to Earth. Besides family and friends, what are you looking forward to doing or seeing or feeling most? Thank you. I'm looking forward to the, uh, the nice ocean air and a uh, peaceful, calm sea. That'll be uh, really nice to get back to. And uh, really just getting around and having that experience. <laughs> These guys already know my answer. I'm looking forward to a real shower. <laughs> Thank you for helping us saying, uh, uh, beside family and friends, yeah. Family and friends are the most important. And beside that, I would love uh, a real hot, cup of coffee <laughs> but uh, I think uh, my dream is a bed for good sleeping uh, I can I, I can uh, lay one side <laughs> another side <laughs> my back my back uh, this sleeping. yeah sleeping <laughs> sleeping <laughs> thanks our next question is from Bill Harwood with CBS News From Bill Harwood, CBS News. Yeah, hi, uh, Bill Harwood, CBS. Um, really, for any of you guys, um, what you know, you're speaking about Frank uh, Rubio and spending a year in space. How would you guys describe uh, how you'd feel if someone said, "Hey, you know, you're at the end of six months, but hey, you got to stay up another six months." How how big of a challenge would that be based on the experience you've had over your six months flight? Thanks. Yeah, you know, obviously that would be a real big challenge, especially this late in the in the game, because uh, you know we're within a couple of weeks of heading home. So 
that would be a huge mental challenge to overcome. And uh, not just for me, but also for my family. And I'm sure they all feel the same, that uh, it's a very, very difficult situation to be put in. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, I think my family would be okay because it's the part of the mission and part of the needs of what we need have, we have to do. And, uh, you know, I, I hope I would respond as well as Frank has. Uh, he's been absolutely amazing to watch. Okay, our next question comes from social media from Leah. She asks, what was your favorite day on the space station and why? Well, uh, my favorite day was my first spacewalk. Uh, that was something I've dreamt of for a very long time, and we had a lot of fun uh, going outside and installing a new IROSA solar array. Um, it was truly the experience of a lifetime. I totally agree with Woody. It is, uh, yeah, EVA day. It was amazing, and specifically when uh, we were repressing, I mean, accomplishing the mission and we're getting uh, back to the station. That was a moment of, uh, of a lifetime. Honestly, the hard training, all the uh, uh, years of um, hard work and preparation and studying, finally coming to an end. So uh, absolutely the EVA day. Uh, I think my favorite day was the uh, day of arriving. <laughs> uh, it was uh, amazing, um, wonderful, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next question is from Robert Perlman with Collect Space. Thanks. Um, did any of the four of you or all of you watch the broadcast of India landing on the moon earlier today or have since seen the photos from the moon? Um, and if so, can you share if it was particularly surreal watching something like that happen while you yourself are in space or just give your thoughts on the achievement that was achieved today? They were saying uh, a podcast, but the broadcast of arriving, yeah. Yeah, no, they yes, actually had the, uh, you yeah. saw it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I had the privilege, actually, to see that. It was amazing. And I was having uh, my lunch, and I was uh, telling Woody, oh, they made it. And it, it was really great. It was, as you mentioned, it's really surreal just watching uh, uh, a man-made object landing on the moon. And uh, this is... Uh, 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 a nation uh, uh, fairing, I mean, uh, uh, like a space fairing nation uh, like India having the first uh, of a kind mission. It's, it's really amazing. I think it's only the beginning uh, for them, and uh, hopefully, many countries and nations will uh, follow the same uh, footsteps. Um, again, we have a, an effort going back to the moon, and this is uh, uh, really important to uh, emphasize on the uh, global. Uh, effort. Uh, we can't go alone. Uh, we always uh, uh, emphasize on the uh, uh, like shared efforts towards, towards achieving one goal. Our next question is from Mark Corot with Aviation Week and Space Technology. Thank you. Uh, my question is uh, for any of you. Um, is there any kind of takeaway that you especially think you've um, uh, experienced for future uh, moon exploration during your stay on the space station? Well, I actually think that uh, Sultan kind of summed it up with the last one. It's uh, incredibly difficult uh, for a single nation to, to kind of go it alone. So watching the cooperation we've had up here has been uh, really amazing and uh, really get a chance to appreciate the global uh, effort that needs to be made and how we can all come together and achieve these goals uh, we set out. Our next question is from Austin with Space Explored. Good afternoon. Um, this question, I'll give it to, to Sultan, but really anyone could answer. Um, I'd love for you to talk about the kind of challenges of photography in space. Um, and maybe a little bit if you want to expand on the overview effect, you know, that feeling of just seeing the world without borders, of uh, the difference between seeing that through a window and seeing it, you know, while you're out on an EVA. Uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the question. Uh, honestly, um, we have uh, 
plenty of uh, training uh, on Earth on uh, different equipments and different cameras and uh, lenses. So we arrive equipped with uh, knowledge, the knowledge and the know-how how to take pictures. But honestly, it was challenging in the first few days because you have to, uh, first of all, uh, and I would say uh, three things. You need to have uh, planning and then patience and then the technique. So with that, uh, I would say it will be uh, easier for, do, for you to, do, to take pictures and it will be uh, easier for you to target specific uh, uh, locations. And regarding the uh, overall uh, or, or the, uh, overview effect is really uh, uh, deep because you, you see the planet and everything uh, that you know of, the history and um, all the actions and the events throughout the history in that um, planet that you are orbiting every 90 minutes and it's only protected by I would say a thin layer of, a thin layer of atmosphere and it's really uh, surreal like you're living in a, in a planet that is susceptible to damage that's why we always say we need to protect it we need to have uh, uh, good uh, care of it uh, like collectively we as, as, as nations so that is my view of, uh, of your questions Our next question is from Elizabeth Howell with Space.com. Hello, uh, this one is for Satan. I wanted to follow up on the Chandrayaan-3 uh, wonderful news. Were you actually, as a group, uh, watching the broadcast, or were you notified of it? Like, how did you find out that the uh, successful landing had occurred? Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't see it live. I was only uh, uh, checking uh, the social media while having lunch, and I it was all over the news. It was really big, and I saw multiple clips of uh, uh, mission control in Israel, and uh, it was, uh, I think, a nation-wide uh, broadcast. I saw the prime minister uh, also watching live, so it was really uh, great watching that achievement, and hopefully, as I mentioned, many nations will follow the same uh, footsteps of India. Our next question is from Manuel Mazzanti. Hi, how are you? Congratulations to uh, four of you on a successful mission. This is a question for Sultan Arniari. Um, we know you've been super busy during your stay on, on the station, but also we saw you on a lot of videos, even in social media, interacting with uh, hundreds, if not thousands of students on live sessions, even answering to your own son, uh, do you? How do you feel? Do you, uh, do you think you have fulfilled part of your mission of inspiring new generations of young people in your country? Absolutely. We, I think um, I come from a region where um, uh, space flight uh, space flights have been. Uh, uh, like stopped for more than 30 years. We had two uh, astronauts from that region and then we stopped for more than 30 years. And uh, my uh, mission is a continuation of uh, uh, the UA program. The first mission was in 2019, uh, conducted by m my colleague Hazan Mansouri. So uh, it's a first of a kind, long duration, and I, I thought I need to uh, deliver and uh, let's say fulfill the uh, the thirst from the audience and the youngsters in the in that region we need to uh, uh, give a, a simple scientific uh, answer to their uh, uh, curiosity so uh, my plan from uh, right the beginning just to uh, uh, showcase everything we do here from science from uh, the daily life the routines that we do every day so uh, I, I felt like obligated to uh, 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 show that in, uh, in a real and simple way so everybody can uh, understand and uh, uh, be a beneficial or benefit from the, from the daily life that we do on, on board the station. Our next question is from Bill Harwood with CBS News. Yeah, thanks. And uh, this one's for Steve or Woody maybe. Um, What's the one thing you'd want to make sure to explain to Crew 7 once they get on board? In other words, maybe a surprise or two that caught you off guard after you got aboard the station that you'd want to, if not warn them about, at least inform them about. Maybe, maybe one or two examples of that. Thanks. All right. Well, I'll, give, I'll provide one, and I'll have Woody fill in the rest. The, uh, the biggest thing to say is that, It'll get better because when you first get here, when you first get to space, even if you've been here before, that first day, that first couple of days, is that there's a big transition period. It actually goes on for about six weeks. So patience and really just keep plugging away, and it will, it all gets smoother, it all gets better, it all 
uh, gets so enjoyable uh, over the next month or two. Yeah, I think that's really well said. We've actually had a chance to talk with Crew 7 a few times, uh, which has been really enjoyable. Um, just talking with them mostly about their uh, flight up on Dragon. We are really looking forward to watching Crew 7 launch on Friday morning. Um, we certainly remember our launch fondly. And I think, um, you know, we kind of uh, suggested that it's, it's worth it for them to really focus on Dragon. They've got a dynamic event coming up. And so um, I'm expecting that they'll be very focused on their launch, their rendezvous, their docking. And then once they get here, um, the time scales change completely. So they've got a lot of time. Um, we all feel like we want to go 100 miles an hour and put our training to use and be really effective right away. But it's a, it's a long road ahead. And so um, they'll, they'll, I hope, hopefully have a bit of time to just relax, enjoy themselves, and get into the groove of uh, living and working up here aboard the space station. The next question is from social media from Nisoth. What are your takeaways from spending six months in space? And is there something that you would like to continue back here on Earth? Yeah, I think, uh, actually, I've heard Steve say this a lot. Um, it's really fun to succeed as a team. And being up here, it really feels like we're part of a team. It's a very diverse team. We have people up here from uh, many nationalities, even more of that coming up on Crew 7. And you know, we're a really tight-knit, close team up here. Uh, I want more of that kind of dynamic in my life. Uh, it's been really enjoyable being part of this team. And uh, we also really feel it up here how part of the team we are with the ground. The, uh, the number of people it takes to support missions like these is incredible. And uh, it's just wonderful working every day with our control centers around the world and all of the engineers at places like SpaceX that uh, support these missions and make them happen. We have another social media question. This one is for Seltan from Ahmed. He wants to know, what is the first thing you will do when you arrive in the UAE? I'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh, uh, arriving uh, to uh, your homeland after um, succeeding uh, your mission, I think uh, it's a great uh, um, thing to have. I, I cannot uh, honestly comprehend uh, yet, so uh, hopefully I'll get to uh, spend a little bit of uh, time with the family. And then I think the, uh, uh, the, the wheel will start rolling again. Hopefully we can uh, get to, in touch with uh, a lot of students and uh, share the experience with everybody and uh, just uh, spread the enthusiasm about space because this place is amazing and this is only the uh, stepping stone uh, uh, for uh, future and further, uh, I would say, uh, targets in the space. So, yeah, overall, just uh, sharing the experience with everybody. Next question is from Marvin Marshall with Space Report News. Hi, good evening, Crew 6 uh, from Planet Earth here. My name is Marvin Marshall with the Space Support News on Twitch.tv. Uh, thank you, NASA, for allowing me this uh, awesome opportunity. And we also want to thank Saltan for all the amazing pictures and videos that you posted during your six-month stay. You know, you've inspired us all and no doubt have made your country very proud. Uh, you know, my question's for anybody who wants to answer. Uh, have there been any pranks played on each other while you guys were up there? You know, any funny stories uh, that you'd want to share from the past six months? You know, thank you again uh, for all your hard work and enjoy the ride back to Earth. Hey, does anybody want to share any of these pranks, or you just want yeah, to? Maybe Woody hiding in the closet, the closet for the. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh yeah, that was good. Yeah, we'll share that one. Go ahead, Woody. Yeah, these, we've uh, <laughs> we've had a couple <laughs> times where we uh, snuck me, the I believe largest human on the space station right now, into some of the smallest places we can find on the space station. So that's been a lot of fun. And we let him out every single time. <laughs> Next question is from Robert Perlman with Collect Space. Steve, unlike your three crewmates there, you you returned to Earth before even aboard another spacecraft named Endeavour. Um, other than ending with a splashdown, what do you expect will be different this time around compared to your past experiences? Well, I've thought about that a lot, obviously, through the years. 
And, uh, you know, by the, my third shuttle flight, I was up walking around. I was perfectly fine after landing. I don't anticipate having that ability this time. I think six months and, and seeing and feeling what, I've, you know, what that does to your body, uh, I anticipate uh, really having to work harder, much harder to get back up to, to full strength. And uh, um, that, I think, is going to be the biggest difference is the, the physical challenge of it, of getting back down. Uh, mentally, I think the transition will happen pretty quickly. It's a, a, a good routine, and we have a good plan set up to transition uh, ourselves back to the uh, back to the real world and back to the office. Next question is from social media from Vebov. How do you keep your leg muscles so strong so that when you get back to Earth, you can properly walk after six months? Well, this is a really important question. We know up here on these long duration missions that we lose both muscle mass and bone density. And so our primary mitigation against that is a device up here called ARED. It's a resistance exercise machine. So we do, uh, every day, we do a lot of squats and deadlifts. And uh, we have other exercises like bench press we do as well. But for the legs, really, squats and deadlifts is where it's at. Um, we also do a lot of cardio. Um, but that consistency of exercise is really important for setting us up for success when we return. Our final question is from social media from Anna asking, how did you start your day on the space station every day? All right. <laughs> we woke up. That's a good start. Yeah, so I would wake up. I'm usually the first one up. And I would try and sneak out of my crew quarters without trying to wake anybody else up. I'd head down to node one and uh, grab a uh, cold coffee and read the uh, yesterday's newspaper and uh, whatever the daily plan is. Yeah, um, I, I tend to wake up on the later side in this crew. Um, and we have a, a document called the Daily Summary that Mission Control puts together. The Orbit 3 shift does that. So typically, I, I wake up, take a look at our schedule for the day, see if there's any updates, read the Daily Summary, grab a coffee, and I'm ready to go for the workday. Yeah, basically the same. We have a daily routine that we need to follow. And um, the, the good uh, thing is uh, you can prepare. Uh, it's not like you're going and drive 20 minutes uh, for work next day. You can uh, prepare the day before and uh, the night before. You can prepare for the next day. So the, uh, the actual day will be uh, smoother. And uh, actually, it's not only work. We, we gather uh, every day. Uh, on the breakfast uh, uh, time and the noon time and uh, finally we get together with the uh, uh, the Russians as well uh, during the evening time and uh, it's, it's really amazing. We're just like uh, one family uh, working together. How do you wake up? Uh, I can uh, something add, nothing. Uh, the same, woke, woke up and uh, eaten the yeah, uh, uh, brush my teeth. Practicing, <laughs> practicing guitar as well. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> but uh, after w woke up. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you to everyone who joined through our various platforms. And Crew 6, thanks again for your time today. And we hope you enjoy your final moments on station. We really can't wait to see you back here on Earth so soon. That'll do it for today. Station is well, thank you all ACR. very much. Greatly appreciate all the questions, and uh, we'll see you on Earth. Station is use in ACR, and that concludes the event. Thank you, all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Thank you.